Some philosophers are more than others the expression of their culture. There is such a philosopher in Russia, although he is rather ignored by most Russians, Lev Shestov. A good example for France is Descartes, very rooted in the French cultural matrix. To the extent we can either say that French culture is Cartesian or that Descartes is the quintessence of the French cultural matrix. It does not mean that Descartes exhausts French philosophical culture, since there are different thinkers that compose the national spirit, such as Pascal or Sartre, but Descartes still incarnates rather well the French spirit quite keen on rationality. And it is frequent for French people, even the common man, to claim as a positive feature of their thinking, I am Cartesian. There is such a philosopher in Russia, although he is rather ignored by most Russians, Lev Shestov, who can be qualified as a Russian existentialist philosopher. And just as the Cartesian spirit is captured through the concept of rationality, Shestovian thinking is well captured by the concept of groundlessness, quite opposed to rationality. Groundlessness, in the philosophy of Lev Shestov, refers to the idea that human existence and the universe at large do not have an inherent rational or logical foundation. The philosophy of Shestov challenges the classical notion of rationalism and systematic philosophy, emphasizing instead the irrational and subjective aspects of human experience. Here are some key elements of Shestov's concept of groundlessness that I will present in a short and concise manner, which of course the specialist will find rather limited or reductionist, but let's do it anyhow. First, a rejection of rationalism. Shestov strongly criticized the Western philosophical tradition's reliance on reason and rational principle. He argues that life's fundamental aspect cannot be fully understood or explained through rational thought alone. Second, emphasis on the absurd. Influenced by existentialist thought, Shestov believed that human existence often confronts the absurd, situations where rationality fails to provide answer or provide any comfort. He saw life as an inherently paradoxical and unpredictable phenomenon. Third, faith over reason. Shestov maintained that faith and personal revelation are much more significant than rational thought. He believed that true wisdom and understanding comes from embracing the irrational and accepting the groundlessness of existence. What can be called a religious thinking, he was rather Christian, huh? grounded in faith. Fourth, individual experience. Shestov placed great emphasis on individual experience, particularly the moments where individuals confront the limits of rational understanding and are thrust into a state of existential crisis or, or revelation. Yes. For him, experience uh, is, is more important than any kind of theoretical speech. Yeah. Fifth, critique of systematic philosophy. Shestov was critical of any attempt of philosophy to be systematic and to impose order and structure on the chaos of existence. For him, this was rather meaningless. Huh? Such systems falsely claim to understand, explain, account for the mysteries of life and existence. Six, 
freedom and groundlessness. Shestov also saw a form of freedom in the acknowledgement of groundlessness. Uh, without the constraints of rational necessity, uh, which can be bounding and, and, uh, and uh, too limited, individuals are then free to create their own values and meanings, uh, which sounds a bit like Nietzsche here. Huh? We should mention that Shestov's ideas were significantly influenced by the writings of Fyodor Dostoevsky and Soren Kierkegaard, both of whom explore the same themes of existential despair, faith, and the limits of rationality. So, in summary, groundlessness in Shestov's philosophy points to the idea that existence lacks a fundamental rational grounding. This perspective challenges the primacy of reason and systematic thought, advocating instead for a recognition of the irrational, subjective, and the role of faith in human life. And any foreigner encountering Russian culture will periodically recognize such features in the local cultural matrix, even though these features can be mixed with different and even opposed philosophical characteristics, such as a certain fascination for science as an absolute criterion. For example, periodically, I was struck when I met a certain obsession, was I religious with the concept of algorithm rather popular in Russia.